Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, Darvitar Kulorna for Day. So I've got this copy of Savage Rifts. Aw. Been thinking. You ever notice how science fiction properties are often telling very different stories, but always from the same basic viewpoint? Kind of how, like, the future is the triumph of space capitalism, space democracy, and the space American way? Maybe not quite that on the nose, but kinda, yeah. I mean, what would a sci-fi story look like from the perspective of a culture other than our own? Fine, I'm interested, but you guys still are not off the hook. I bet it looks something like... Gene elimden kurtuldun dünya. Bir daha seni hiçbir kuvvet kurtaramayacak. O zaman uzayda en güçlü ben olacağım. No, definitely not. No, I'm talking about what would happen if you were to filter a space opera through the lens of, say, a thousand and one Arabian Nights. Oh, this. This would happen. This is Coriolis, The Third Horizon by Free League Publishing. In Coriolis, humanity has reached the stars through a network of spatial gateways. These were created by an ancient and apparently extinct precursor species known only as the Portal Builders. The Portal Network was used to establish human colonies in a nearby region of space, the so-called First Horizon. These colonies in turn sent forth a second wave of expansion, and then a third. The Third Horizon was colonized in two successive waves. The first come, as they are known, arrived through the Portal Network and built a highly traditional society spanning multiple star systems. By contrast, the Zenithians are the descendants of a generation ship that took the long way around. Launched before the portals were first discovered, its crew made the journey across the void over many years. The Zenithians have made efforts to integrate into the culture of the first come, but tend to be more secular in outlook. The great ship Zenith has been cannibalized and transformed into a hub of trade and diplomacy called Coriolis Station. When the older colonies tried to reclaim their wayward successors, a series of massive star-spanning conflicts known as the Portal Wars were fought. In the end, the portals leading towards Earth were permanently sealed. As we alluded to before, the culture of the Third Horizon is a highly stylized version of Earth's Middle East, with a large splash of Frank Herbert's doom. Many factions vie for power and wealth by fair means or foul. Any of them might have a job for your players. Some of them might even be legal. While predominantly a space opera in the vein of Firefly, the setting also includes a fair amount of mysticism. Faith forms the basis of society in much of the horizon, with citizens of all walks of life making offerings to the nine icons in observance of ancient tradition. The icons' blessings are most often invoked to ward off the influence of an entity called the darkness between the stars. This enigmatic force of evil embodies all things corrupt and malevolent. Real or not, it's widely believed that ships lost in the void are victims of its malign power. The Third Horizon is full of wonders, secrets, and mysteries, but it is most certainly not for the timid. Coriolis uses a variant of the game engine designed for its predecessor, Mutant Year Zero. It's a simple, streamlined D6 dice pool system with successes scored on a roll of six. Players create their characters with a group concept in mind, selected from free traders, mercenaries, explorers, agents, or pilgrims. Each one grants a selected group talent to all members of the group and defines the group's overall goals. Characters are individually defined by a concept, working something like a character class. The core book provides a selection of 11 concepts, each divided into three sub-concepts. For example, a character could be an artist musician, a negotiator diplomat, or an operative assassin. Each combination would provide a number of core skills, talents, and starting equipment. By default, all characters are of human or at least near-human origin, but there are provisions for playing one of a handful of aboriginal alien species. The humans of the setting consider them little more than chattel, however, and tellingly refer to them as semi-intelligences. Free League places a great emphasis on character relationships, conflicts, and the overall group dynamic over complex rules. Combat is relatively simple, with each character receiving a number of points worth of actions in a given turn. Weapon damage is a static value, but a character's armor rating is rolled as dice pool to resist it. Each six reduces damage sustained by one, with any remainder subtracted from small pool of hit points. Similarly, a character's mind points can be lost to stun weapons or other mental stress. Lose all of either, and the character is broken. A broken character is removed from the fight, but otherwise sound. Critical hits, however, can cause debilitating injuries or even death. While each player creates his or her own character, all of them create their ship together. There are a wide variety of modules and features available to customize the group's ride. Do your players want a swift courier vessel, a tough and reliable freighter, or a sleek and deadly gunship? 
And yes, the game has a fairly elegant starship combat system built in, with each character in the group manning a different crew station and contributing to the ship's operations. This way, no one has to feel left out when the torpedoes start flying. More importantly, the ship is the group's home, and in some ways it's almost a character in its own right. After all, what would Firefly have been without the Serenity? This is a Swedish game. Yeah. yeah. So I want to say, hey, till Voras Finska Tietere, and hope that I said that remotely right. And uh, now that we've got the foreign language parts out of the way, let's do the most Indiana thing we can possibly do and finish this review eating <laughs> sugar cream pie and drinking Fago. <laughs> So Coriolis. Uh, Wouldn't that be the most Michigan thing? <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Michigan is only there to keep Indiana from touching Canada, so. It's true. Or we could talk about the actual <laughs> the game? actual game that we we're trying to review. What I really actually like this game a lot. I think it's really cool. I, um Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things where like I almost everything that comes out of Free League, I think, is at least kind of stylish and interesting. Yeah, uh, they, that's that's one so. thing I can say for Free League that they definitely that they definitely <laughs> is this one of those games that has that is built to support like the setting is built to support a module like a a, a major adventure like no, Mutant actually, Year Zero or no. Lab Alpha. Have you noticed that they put the two little dots like the two little diamond shaped dots underneath the S in Coriolis? I did. That's Why? that. Well, that's an Arabic diacritic. Okay. Isn't that neat how they did that? They've got... Take your word for it because I can't. Clean. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Like, it I is. think this is the um, S right that, there. That's an O. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the S is at the end. Oh my god. Yeah, there's an S in the middle of okay. Coriolis. <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> there's like a tradition of pilgrimage mm -hmm. to visit holy sites and all this kind of. It's. It feels like sort of an evolution of Middle Eastern culture, and that's interesting. At least the Middle Eastern cult, Middle Eastern culture, by way of Hollywood. There's a reason that we we indicated it was a stylized yes. version of Middle Eastern culture. It's odd to have successes scored on a six. Yeah, that's yeah. actually my big problem. Go that ahead. is my biggest problem with uh, honestly uh, free league stuff in general because I've played. Mutant Year Zero, I played Gen, Lab, uh, Gen Lab Alpha, and that was actually my first introduction to them and the system that they use. Right. And I have found that in a dice pool of anywhere between, uh, we'll, we'll make it easy estimate, like between five and seven dice, I'm lucky if I get one success because they seem to only be scaled on a six usually. And I know that doesn't seem like it should be probabilistic, but yeah, that's like my experience saying. is like one out of five dice rolls yeah. yields a success. And in that respect, I think their difficulty tends to skew a little too high. Yeah, I feel like maybe it should have been on a five and a six. You can pray to the icons for a re-roll. You re-roll failed dice. You don't re-roll all of it. Right. And in Mutant Year Zero, it causes literal physical damage to push. Whereas in Coriolis, when you pray to the icons, you actually give the game master a darkness point. Although, with the darkness point system, basically the darkness points are intended to create dramatic events. They're created, they're, they're that moment, the, to create that moment where your gun runs dry. Right. Or your uh, equipment fails. Oh, or, okay, okay. So it's like, like that. so that's it's a mechanic a, that... Alright, so you're, you're, you're loading up so, the somebody to give you critical failures. Um, in a well, way. they can. Narrative failures. Like uh, full disclosure, uh, John and I did not read this game in the level of depth that we usually read these games. We mostly focused on the fluff. Um, most of my, I most of my knowledge of the system comes from other games, Maybe and then I company. looked at the character creation. It's why I'm kind of, I'm kind of trying to bring yeah, this so. stuff up because I've read it probably more in depth. Than right. So that's that's why we're um, we're deferring more to uh, Jay in this one. So. But the darkness point system is is actually pretty, is actually interesting in the sense that I've see I'm seeing this more and more like these these issue these systems where the game master has a mechanic that lets him hopefully not screw over the players so much as make their lives interesting and yeah. sort of that add tension to the story in sort of that China, that that ancient Chinese proverb you may you live in interesting times and sort of that way. <laughs> um, so the, that's not a proverb that's a curse, sir. Yeah, well, same thing. <laughs> But in this, in this instance, I'm right. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, not really. I am absolutely wrong, but that's fine. Uh, that's how Jay is going to be super Indiana today. Being wrong? Yeah, yeah. Being wrong and demanding yeah. that you're not. 
Could give us a um, give us a rundown on why we're stupid because we don't believe in flat Earth. Actually, everyone knows that the Earth is not in fact a sphere; it is a disc supported on four elephants. On the back of a turtle. On the back of a giant turtle. The great Atuan. Obviously, I mean, I think that's the greatest flaw of Coriolis is that it doesn't take into account space turtles. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, even Michael Bay was able to do that. Uh, <laughs> no, no. They they were I'm able to take uh, four ordinary turtles and mutate them into a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, is what it is. Okay. Actually, two bad movies. We also we always get a lot of comments that we don't talk enough about the system. Uh, the game runs on an action point system. You usually get about three action points per round. Yeah. Uh, most things cost one or two. Right. It, defines, it. Well, it defines what it does is it defines uh, different types of actions and how many action points they take. Every character is expected to have a sort of defined initial relationship with other characters. And they even give suggestions with the various concepts. Right. The group as a whole is built with a concept of what they're going to be doing. Um, so you have this unifying feeling, and it's based on what the kind of what kind of characters. Are. It's a good thing. I'd, I'd like to see more games do something like that. Yeah. There is one more thing we need to talk about in character creation. What's that? And that is... Non-human races. Oh, and yes. how do you make one? The semi-intelligence. <laughs> I hate that term. Well, for they, some they reason. refer to like three things. <laughs> that might be it. Yeah, well, that, that's that. There's three things. There's humans. There's human knights, which are post-humans that have specifically evolved to a yes. particular alien or environment. Human. And then there's like anthropomorphic, genetically engineered things, aren't there? Like, uh, no, they're actually aliens. Are they? Uh, they're actually they're indigenous. I, aliens. Okay, I, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't believe catch that. But I, I couldn't. Mean, I could not find what it is. Is they've done how to make one as a character, even though. And that's my problem. They go out of their way in two separate places. They go out of their way to tell you you can make a quote semi intelligence as a player character. I mean, but they it's... provide. But I have not been able to find, and I've read this extensively. They have not. I have not been able to find rules for creating one. Neither could I. Uh, maybe is it something? Maybe they intended to be in a <laughs> in a future. It's possible, you know, expansion. I've not or seen any anything of it. I have the the one supplement that I know of. I will say they're not very alien. They're not very. They're, it's um, that kind of like very low key alien, that very yeah. familiar. They're, it's I a mean, very Star Trek, Star Wars kind of alien. They're sort of predatory, wolf, savage wolf people, sneaky, uh, you know, sneaky pack oriented hyena people, and. Lemur people. They're One not of the developed. More underrepresented very well. furry species. You know, maybe we just haven't found it yet, but I mean, if there's furry trash to be played in a game, that's I tend what to, we want to play. I tend to gravitate towards it. So I mean, I'm just like, how do I do this, guys? I guess but uh, in terms of creature feature, this game kind of a little bit dropped the ball on me. I think. But that's the only place but it I drops like, the ball. Yeah, I like a lot of this game. I'm kind of a sucker for a good sci-fi setting. Like, I, I that's kind of my my thing. It's my genre. So Coriolis was, was a kind of a breath of fresh air because while it uses a lot of space-faring, space opera sort of tropes... It also, this has that very kind of... Um, frontier sci-fi that kind of cowboys and aliens feel to it but without the american bent yeah so i would much. agree there's a lot of or well, or well i mean it, you don't really I'm cowboys sorry. and aliens doesn't require I'm, I'm hurt. aliens i like, I like aliens <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a little low tech for me as far as sci-fi goes it feels a little bit more star warsy that kind of gritty tech like this compared to, to something like eclipse phase yeah. right now it's, it's uh, the very technology different. is nowhere near the same yeah this or is, even this is or even exwent draconis it's almost got that rockets and ray guns yeah so i think we can i think we obviously we recommend oh, yeah. coriolis Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, if yeah. if oh, yeah. you want a good sci-fi setting that is entirely self-contained, yeah. uh, is entirely, for the most part, original, and has that kind of gritty, adventuresome, low-tech sci-fi, yeah. Coriolis is really good for you. Uh, if you're looking for a game with a lot of creature feature or super high-technology futurism... Yeah. Not so much. This one, not so much. This one's probably not for you. But as, out of all of the games that I've seen from Free League, so far That's I think this favorite. is the one that I recommend the most. Definitely. Yeah. Ow, sorry. Uh, <laughs> touching this is shocking me a little. So. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At, like at the connection. <laughs> made a face earlier and that's what that was about ah, um how about now? okay that's that's better give, give now it a little give it. it a little bump see if it's still no because i can't okay 
Okay. All right. Um, I was going to say, this is definitely one of my favorite games that they've put out. Like, the my favorite game that they have put out. And I, this is a beautiful, interesting, rich setting. And I definitely, yeah. definitely recommend the this. The art is so gorgeous. Oh, it is God, gorgeous. Right? The art is so gorgeous. I love how they've reproduced that look of old uh, Middle Eastern art that had metal in the paint. Mm-hmm. Like, this, so that it looks like the painting is oxidizing. It's really great. Yeah. But that's all we've got for you. Huh? I said very cool. Very cool. That's all we've got for you this month. Um, This is the first video we've done since our Patreon has gone live. So real quick, let's read some names because there are some people who are pledged to us. Uh, First on the list is... Georg Mir, a good friend of ours, our, the developer of Mictem. And Crowned Rat, who I have to record a special voiceover for because I forgot to ask how they wanted to be credited before we recorded this. Thank you to all of our supporters. Uh, if you guys want to check us out, we are at patreon.com slash seven realms prote- protections. <laughs> we are the protector of the realms. Yes. That's the my new guard. title. <laughs> the King's Guard. <laughs> no, usually it's the king that's the protector. Yeah. And then they're, they're, they're the protectors of the protector. Protectception. And then they have personal guards that are protectors yeah, of the protector okay. of the we, protector. We, we get it. We get it. <laughs> and then the, the people are the protector. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll be back next month with more stuff. Um, maybe I'll finally get to do Savage Riffs. <laughs>